Hey, ya uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Foundry Virtual Tabletop from the ground up. And in our last episode, we talked about the chat, the commands of chat. We talked about some real basic rolling. In this, we are going to get down with rolling. We're going to talk about at least all the documented features I could find on rolling um, and wrote notes on. So one thing I wanted to point out really quick first is another really good reason to get Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I'm going to pull over my Discord real quick. And uh, dun, 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 dun. I don't think I need it. Well, yeah, I'll put it to basically right there. I just got to resize it a tiny bit here so you can see this stuff. And I went too high on that. Hello? Can't move. Oh, there we go. Bloop, like so. Um, so anyway, the Discord channel is actually very active. As you can see, uh, there's lots of you know posts, and I constantly go on here, go read various ones, and then tell it to mark everything as read. However, what I want to point out is this announcements channel. As you can see, since the beginning of this, there's been tons of announcements talking about the developer stuff and that. Um, but there's always been these other things where the developer, Atropos, has actually been partnering or joining up with or, you know, um, collaborating, whatever, with all these different things. For example, here's one where they have a deal of giving you 26 background environmental and combat themes as well as seven fanfare effects so lots of things like that um, then he also of course the updates but he's constantly world anvil integration um, clash of the kobolds this is the one we talked about last time i believe it was in this it wasn't in the stream uh, where you can actually get this this um, adventure for free and at the point when this came out it was exclusively for champions heroes and legend uh, members of his patreon however uh, it's since you know uh, as it says here July 3rd it will be available for anyone that has foundry VTT which is really cool then um, we have this one with uh, some DM Dave who is always putting out stuff but the one I kinda I, I went way too high I think uh, some that I wanted to point out is it this one no that's just foundry uh, is he's actually you know partnered joined whatever you want to say with a couple map maker people um, one is I think it's Miska or Mishka or something like that and the other one is this spell arena Ballerina. And as you can see, 54 game ready battle maps by this guy that is just added as a free module. You just go into your modules. Um, if we go in here, you can just go into your modules and do install module. And I think the one is like Miska or something along those lines. So we do MIS maybe. Yeah, Miska's Maps, which is 12 game-ready battle maps. But then if we do this uh, S-P-E-L-L, -L, you can see Spell Arena's battle map collection, 54 for free. You just get them, and they just act as a module that will be available to you. So now that I've got that out of the way, just yet another reason. Let's go ahead and tell this to update while I finish talking. Uh, just another reason that... Foundry is really striving to be number one. And like I said before, I think this could definitely be number one. And one of the things that would definitely push it over that the edge uh, would be if they get like Wizards of the Coast licensing where they can actually officially have Wizards of the Coast product that they can sell or if the D&D Beyond stuff, ultimately I would like it to be something with D&D Beyond where they actually have kind of a interface into D&D Beyond that uses your account and can access everything you own. Uh, that would bring in, you know, all your different uh, classes and backgrounds and 
uh, races and everything based off of what you actually have ownership to. Looks like there wasn't anything. So that would definitely push them over the top completely um, because then all of a sudden everything would be available. Now, saying that, the uh, VTT assets, which is constantly growing as well, is getting better and better as well. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're going to go into our test world now that we've used five and a half minutes talking about this stuff. And we'll go ahead and join our world. And we're going to talk about the different dice commands because there are a lot of them that you can do. If you were on my stream last night, well, I guess it wasn't last night when you're watching this because this comes out Tuesday. So Friday night, uh, you'd know why that fan's sitting there spinning. Um, if not, well, you should watch my streams. What was that? Oh, that's the door we made down there. All right, so um, this is all irrelevant. What I wanted to show you is really quick, if we go into the assets, the not assets, the um, compendiums, this is where those maps are actually placed and I think they are part of this right I suppose trade goods macros maybe it was in the other map that I did it but they'll just show up here and you can just click on them and it'll have the maps and you can just you know drag and drop them into your uh, scenes or whatever uh, but anyway, that's not what we're doing today today. We're going into the dice so we talked about the different things here and they're kind of confusing and they kind of make sense um, and if you if you didn't watch my last video definitely go check it out so you can see what these different things all do but what we're gonna do today is talk about the different types of roles so as we talked uh, you can do slash roll and maybe like 1d 20 and you can see this rolls a 1d 20 if you click it you can see what you rolled of course you can see what you rolled right here because we have no modifiers if you have really basic modifiers really easy you just add them so we do slash r uh, like 1d 20 and then plus I don't know 5 and you can see here we now can see we rolled a 7 plus our 5 gives us 12 so really quick type of things like that we also brushed upon how to do advantage and disadvantage now there's two ways you can do this and they achieve the same thing but are kind of the opposite so for example you can use kh for keep high or the same thing is called drop low which is dl which will once again it will i mean drop high which no a drop low would do the same thing where it's going to give you the advantage and keep the high so you can use whichever one you want i don't know why you would use one over the other than simply you can type kh or kl faster than you can type dh or dl because let's just show you real quick if we say um slash well not and you can also do roll if you're a really fast typer. I just do slash R because I'm not. So 1D20. And then we can say keep high, highest 1. Uh, not 1D20, I mean 2D20. So keep high. So it lets you put in a number. I believe if you have just the 2 and just do keep high, it'll automatically do the 1. So here you can see we rolled a six and a five and it kept the f uh, the six right if we go back in here and we say uh, drop lowest right we're gonna get the same effect where once again it's going to you know keep the highest <laughs> or drop the lowest so you can do that same thing with also disadvantage where you would go uh, drop the highest and now you can see we're having disadvantage we have to keep the lowest of the two and like I said just um, 
We can change to, well, I guess we got to get rid of both of these and say keep lowest. So whichever one makes sense to you the best is the one you want to do. For me, I would probably say drop. Um, and the reason I do that is because, well, no, actually, when I'm playing on a table and I'm explaining to someone, I say you roll two d20s and you keep the highest. I might even say drop the the the, the highest for dissident. I'm not sure. I I don't know how else to explain that, but it's it's two ways of kind of doing the same thing. And you know, if you're for whatever reason doing like triple disadvantage, I guess uh, you could do something like slash r three d twenty and say keep the lowest uh, and say keep the lowest one, or you could say keep the lowest two. I guess I don't know. So here you can see we rolled three of them, and oh, we had a 20, a 15, 11. It has to keep the 11. Uh, if for whatever, I don't know why you'd keep the lowest two. But here you can see we had a 10 and a 2, so it's 12. It is going to add them in together, but that's just the nature of the thing. So the next thing we have is re-rolling. And to re-roll, uh, you would just say... Uh, it would be R, so we would say, uh, let's say we're rolling for our character, because I did this in, in uh, Fantasy Grounds. We'd say um, slash R, and we could say 4D6, and if we said the result, we're going to re-roll any ones, right? Oh, that's a Y. R1. So here you can see we rolled 46. We did get a 1, so it re-rolled it, and I believe we got a 5 from it. So then what we could also do here is, say, drop the lowest one, and that would be the stat. So we could say DL. And I don't think you have to have the 1 if it's just 1. Let's just double check that. So here you can see we got a nice one. Uh, we didn't get any 1s. I'd like to get a 1 maybe. Did we get a one that time? We got a two. Let's do three of them and see maybe. Uh, we got a two. We got two. That's pretty good actually. Got a two. There's a one, and I'm assuming it re-rolled it to the four, but then it drops the three because that is the lowest. Now you can also do things such as say. I want to re-roll anything like if you were a mean DM and said I do not allow sixes on my six-sided dice we could say where the roll is greater than uh, five because that means it'll re-roll sixes and that would probably make our people cry uh, didn't do it Let's just see if any of these did it nope and there you go so here they lost the six, um, and we're not dropping any of them. So here you can see it's 14, so it re-rolls the six. Now, with that greater than, you can also go ahead and say that, you know, I want to, if I want to re-roll fives and sixes, right? We could say, uh, whoops, I want greater than, and say four, and now it will re-roll fives and sixes. So it had a one, it re-rolled the six, it got a five, but it kept the five, so that might be, I guess it doesn't perpetually, maybe we'll, we'll check that, maybe there's more in here that will keep doing that. Um, so anyway, you can do that, you can use the greater than, you'd say greater than equal to, which means we could actually have it say six, uh, we can't roll a seven, so we could do that, so in that case we could say something like greater than equal to six and then it will reroll all sixes or greater than or equal to five and then it will reroll five and sixes um, it seems to only do it once although uh, I can't remember it might actually have other things that let you do it more 
So we won't we won't just say that completely right now. So if we said greater than or equal to four, which should re-roll actually let's even say three. That should re-roll quite a few dice. So with that we re-rolled, we got a six which re-rolled, which is why it's dim. We had uh, we got a four I'm assuming, then we rolled a one, then we re-rolled a six, and we got a five, and then our other two dice were five. Assuming that it's actually putting these in the order that they actually came, and it's resolving each one. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move on. So we can also do less than. So if we wanted to re-roll ones and twos uh, at least once, we could do that if we're a really nice GM. Or we can also do the less than equal to, which is the same thing. The other thing you can do is you can uh, roll a set of dice and count the number of times a certain result or a range is achieved. So this is with the CS, which is count success. So we do slash roll. And let's do maybe five. D20, I don't know, we're just messing around. Uh, and then we could say uh, 5D20 and then say CS for count successes. And let's just say uh, greater than equal to 15. We had none. We had two ones, a 5, a 12, and a 4. Wow. We have three successes, so that's pretty good. We had a natural 20, we had a 19, and we actually had the 15. So you can also count successes, uh, and then you can also do the opposite where you're saying you're counting the lowest, you know. So instead of saying, let's see anything higher than 15 we roll, we could say anything lower than 15 by saying less than, right? If we roll that, we can see, even though you wouldn't say a success is rolling low, the, the condition we're saying here is anything lower than 15 and 15 is considered a success. So here you can see we rolled our 5d20 and we have 4 that succeeded the condition that we gave it. So once again, you can do that with greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Uh, the next one is margin of success. So this will roll a set of dice and compare the total against some target, keeping the difference as the result. So this one's a little tricky. But what we want to do is say, um, this is... To me, this is almost like doing a negative modifier in some of the cases, but not all of them. So if we say margin of success, we can do slash roll. And we can do, um, let's see, what should we do? Let's do maybe 8d20. And then we'll say margin of success. So this is what we're going to subtract from each one. So basically the, the syntax for it is ms and then we equals and our value that uh, we basically want to subtract from it. So let's say uh, equals 10. So here you can see we had rolled 8d20s. And uh, I don't know how exactly you can see what we're talking about here. But we got a 102. So if we add this up, uh, there's 20, 40, 60, uh, 77, is that right? 77. No, I lost track. Uh, 77 and 7 would be another... I'm not good at math. Let's see, that's 93 and then 18 would put us at 
93 and 18 would put us at 1. Actually, I think I missed it by 1. So that's 112. And then I guess it's subtracting the 10 from that, what gives us 102. Is that. I'm not exactly sure where you'd use that in D&D &D specifically. Maybe other games you would. But uh, you can do the same thing and say the greater than. So instead of the equals, you could do greater than. You could do greater than equals to, less than, less than equals to. <coughs> like I said, I'm not 100% sure, at least in D&D, &D, where that is useful. If anyone has any input on that, feel free to let me know. Some other things you can do, and we kind of talked about this in the last episode, was we can also do things in parentheses, which will uh, take that value and do something with it. So for example, uh, let's go ahead and say we're going to do a roll, and in parentheses, we're going to go ahead and say, remember we said at abilities, A-B-I-L-I-T-I-E-S, dot let's do strength str and the modifier so this is going to get the current character's strength modifier which I don't know that it's going to do anything for us because we're the GM and technically do not have a character but let's see what this does uh, and then like if we say d6 so this for example if I had a strength modifier in fact you know what let's Let's do this as our character. Um, L O C A L, localhost, 30,000. We'll go ahead and do Derby Fan because she definitely has a character. So, if I'm understanding this correctly, what this is going to do is it's going to give you the number of dice as your modifier. So, if we go into Derby Fan here, we can see that her strength modifier is plus four. So uh, if we do this, we should get uh, 46, I think, uh, control V. So this will go 4D6 uh, and it will roll it. Let's see if we're right. Yep, 46. So you can go ahead and do that kind of stuff where if you have something that's asking, you know, that... Um, What's something that scales exactly with your with your level? I'm not 100% sure. But if there is something, which I'm, I think there is, I just can't think of it off the top of my head, you can actually do that. The other thing you can do is, for example, you could kind of perform a roll inside the parentheses and have that generate your other thing. So if we come here and we say roll, and inside here, we're actually going to put another value of uh, let's do 1d20. So this will have the chance of rolling 1d20 d6s. So let's see what that gives us. So as you can see that, we rolled a 7 with our d20. And so now it says, okay, I'm going to roll 7d6. And there you go. There is your, your value right there. Um, you can also do kind of a value on both of those. So if we, <laughs> this one's really impractical, but we could actually also have a value in here saying the same thing maybe, uh, 1d20, and close parenthesis. And this will roll 1d20 d20s. So it looks like, well, we just told it to do, oh, it just rolled one. Wait, is that right? 1d20. D20. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Wait, let's do the... Oh, because I did 1d20. D20. Once again, I don't know where you would use this one at all. However, let's say... Mm, Let's kind of do the opposite of what we were doing. Let's uh, do this, and we'll actually have it maybe be our, our modifier here for this part. And we'll just do um, the D20 part in there. And let's see if that works right. 
So we could do maybe 1d20 plus our modifier value, whatever that is. So this will be plus 4, right? So this should be however many <laughs> 1 through 4. <laughs> is that right? No, it would be 4. It, this would definitely be 4. 1d20, which is, I got a 5. Oh, and 4. That's not quite working like I would expect it to. But that's the example that's in the thing. I might have to research that one, because that one does not quite work like I'm thinking it would. Um... The other thing you can do is actually have some dice pools. Let's say you have Bardic Inspiration or something like that that adds a 1d4 to your your thing. So let's say you're you're a rogue and you're well, yeah, you're a rogue. You're using your rapier or something like that. So you do roll and you're doing a what is it? 1d8, I think it is for the rapier. Um, but we can actually set up as a dice pool. Uh, by saying, uh, is that, yes, that one, the little curly brace, uh, and then we could actually say, uh, plus your modifier, right, uh, which I'm not going to type in the attribute thing, we're just going to say your modifier is a plus four, I forgot the plus, uh, and then we can use a comma, and now we could say 1d4 in here for the bardic inspiration or whatever inspiration. So let's see if this works right. Oh, we have a closed parenthesis, not a closed bracket or a curly brace. So here you can see it did 1d8 plus 4 plus a 1d4. So we did the 1d8, which is 6. So I'm assuming we rolled the 6. 6 in 4 is 10 plus our four is 14. So there you go. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know. But you could do the same thing with the keep high, um, you know, with the count successes and all that fun stuff. So I think this kind of covers at least, uh, gives you an idea. We're at 27 minutes. I don't want to have this go too long. But uh, this kind of covers the basic dice rolling. Now there are also things in here called, uh, there's a mod that I could show you real quick if I could click it. Uh, I think it's better dice or simple dice. I have two of them. I, I've got lots of mods in here. Uh, I didn't want module settings. I want view activate module. Um, wait, no, that's module management. Is it this one? Oh, wait, no, I don't have any on this one, I don't think. That's okay. Anyway, they actually give you dice that you can roll on the table. I think it's called Better Dice. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, it also, I think the Better Dice or Simple Dice or something like that, uh, also has a thing where it gives you, like, the dice that you can just click on down here and you can click, you know, the D4 two times to get uh, 2d4 or whatever you know so you can do that um, it, they're really simple commands the most complex part is when you're doing your attributes or something like that whether it's an attribute that's a proficiency then you would you know say proficiency you do at attribute dot proficiency which will add two if you're a level one through was a four um, and so on and so forth. Um, if there's anything I missed in here that you really feel is important to mention on, on these roles, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will definitely address it. I also wanted to thank, uh, who was it? Taz Astical. Taz Ast Astical? Taz Astical. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who said, going well so far, nice one, dude, love the game. Thank you for the kind, oh wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Never mind. 
Uh, let's see. That was in the. That was actually in Pathfinder. Uh, Foundry. I wanted to thank though for say thanks for making this video, Taz. So that's awesome that Foundry itself is watching it, and hopefully I'm not slaughtering uh, this stuff. Like I said, feel free to let me know of any issues I might run into. Um, I'm just trying to bring these videos and teaching what I learn as I learn it and sometimes I learn it while I'm doing it to you guys uh, and giving you a nice place because uh, I've been told I, I can do that pretty well. And yeah. So that'll do. I've rambled on long enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord servers. Definitely sign up for my Discord server because this comes out on Tuesday. Tomorrow, I'm announcing the 57 winners of the Steam game. Now, even if you're signing up a little later you might be okay because if those people don't uh, request their game in a timely manner then they will be pushed to the back of the line or re-entered into the pool to be drawn from and someone else will take their place because I don't want to sit on these games forever so anyway guys that's it um, until next time I'll be seeing you later bye